Okay, to continue talking about our exponential functions, uh, we want to talk about transformations. So these have the same rules that any other thing that we've used transformations on, any other functions, where it depends on where the number is, whether we're adding or subtracting, or whether we're multiplying or whatever. That's going to affect our original function, and it's going to affect it the same way that it has every other with every other function, like sine and cosine and all of those. So if my original function is y equals 3 to the x, then here's some of the transformations, some examples of some transformations I So let's look at uh, some of these transformations. Like if I want to do a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink, remember that's the number that's out in front of my function. So my original function is 3 to the x. So if I put a 5 in front of it, multiplying it, then that's a vertical stretch of 5. If I put a number that's less than 1, like 1 half, that's going to be a vertical shrink of 1 half. Whenever I put the number inside my function next to x, so up here in the exponent, remember we take the reciprocal of 1 fourth and we're saying that it stretches by 4. It, it works oppositely, that fractions actually stretch if it's right next to x um, in the exponent. And then, so on this one, since it's 6x, we would say that's a horizontal shrink of 1 sixth because 6 has a reciprocal of 1 sixth. If we're reflecting, um, there's two places our negative could be, and it affects the graph differently. If it's in front of our function, then it's flipped across the x-axis. If it is inside our function, so if it's up next to the x or inside the exponent, then that's a reflection across the y-axis. Then the shifts, I think, are pretty easy for us to remember. If it's in the exponent, remember that's a left or right and we take the opposite sign. So x plus 2 actually shifts left 2, x minus 5 shifts right 5. If it's outside of my uh, exponent, uh, it's up or down. So I'm shifting up 3 and shifting down 4. So that's just some examples of the different cases we could have. And then we can end up combining them in lots of different ways. So these actually are pretty easy to graph without using your graphing calculator because of, of those transformation rules and whatnot. So let's start on this. Describe how to transform the graph of f into the graph of g. Sketch the graphs by hand and support your answer with your graphing calculator. So to get from 3x to 3 to the, to get from 3 to the x power to 3 to the x plus 4 power, we're adding 4 to x, which is going to be a shift, um, opposite of 4 is negative, so, or op the opposite of positive 4 is negative 4, so shift left 4. And that's the only transformation that's going on, so if I graph f of x equals 3 to the x, when I plug in 0, I get 1. When I plug in 1, I would get 3. As I go to the left, I get closer and closer and closer to 0. As I go up and to the right, I get closer, I keep going up, I keep get closer theoretically and closer to infinity. If I just shift this left 4, then each of those points that I just drew, I would just move over to the left 4. So instead of at 0 comma 1, I would be over here at negative 4 comma 0. Instead of being at 1 comma 3, I'd be at negative 3 comma 3. And then I would draw my exponential curve. Okay, um, on this next one, we're going from e to the x to negative e to the 2x. Um, so just thinking about what the transformations are, the negative in front of the e means that we're reflecting across the x-axis. We're going to flip our graph over the x-axis. The 2 in front of the x is a horizontal shrink of 1 half, because we, if it's in the exponent, we're going to take the reciprocal, and that tells us our stretch or shrink. Also, e, there's a button on your calculator for e. There's actually two different buttons. One gives it an exponent automatically, and the other one is just the number e. This is one of those numbers kind of like pi where we would we would say it's well it's approximately 2.7 and then it just keeps going forever 
Uh, and so like Pi, it comes in really handy for for something, but it just keeps going on forever. Somebody, um, and I think it was actually Euler or Euler or however you say his name, came up with it. And so it, we just use the button on the calculator most of the time. Or we leave E in our answer, just like sometimes we write our answers like 2 pi. We could write our, if we, depending on what we're doing, we could end up writing our answers like 2E or something. That's all to say that whenever I graph this, I'd still be at 0, comma 1. And then when I plug in 1, I actually get approximately 2.7 something. So you're going to put that second dot between 2 and 3. And then draw your graph. I'm going up to infinity, going, getting closer and closer to 0. So I want to reflect across the x-axis. And I also want to shrink my graph horizontally by 1 half. So normally I would be at 0, comma 1. So that's going to make it be at 0, comma, negative 1. Um, and if we plug in a 0, like we should see that that works out. If I do negative e to the 2 times 0, well, that's really e to the 0, which is 1, with a negative in front, so to negative 1. Uh, normally at 1, I'm at e. And so, because normally I would have e to the first power, but now I'm going to have negative e to the 2 times 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. This is the same thing as saying negative e squared. Okay, and we can we can figure out a decimal approximation for that if we want to. I know that it's going to be farther down than my other one was. Um, 2.7 if I square it has to be somewhere between 4 and 9. So let's just stick it somewhere right here-ish. And so this is going to go toward negative infinity, and then this way it will go towards zero. And it might help to kind of draw this in steps. So we could have reflected first and then shrunk it in or, or vice versa. Um, but that's how that works. We have the thing called logistic growth functions. So exponential functions in general that show exponential growth or decay, you know, they keep going up to infinity or down towards zero, but as far as a growth modeling goes, there are very few situations where we can actually continue to grow exponentially in forever, because what happens, like if I'm talking about a rabbit population, I'm using exponential growth maybe, well, I can't have an infinite number of rabbits. At some point, there's not going to be enough food or a big enough environment, so we have uh, these things called logistic growth functions. And it looks like one of these two things, either they'll put in um, a b that, a, a b to some x power, or they'll put in the e, and then it'll be to negative of kx power. And a, b, c, and k are all just positive, co positive constraints with b less than 1. And so the important thing to realize is the constant c the thing on top is the limit to growth. And so whatever you get, that top number is where you're going to be approaching. Um, so if I want to graph the function and find the y-intercept in the horizontal asymptotes, I'd pull out my calculator, which you should do right now, and I would type this in. We want to make sure to do it pretty like carefully. We would do 12 divided by, open our parentheses, 1 plus 2 times 0.8 and then house top x kind of looks like I made a colon there. So top 2 times 0 0.8 cx. And if you look at your graph, um, we end up with a y-intercept at 4. The reason I know the y-intercept is at 4 is because if you, if you graph it on your calculator and then you press the trace button, almost all the time, actually, I think it gives you the y-intercept. Like, that's the point it starts to trace on, unless you've already messed with the graph. We, this is like an exponential function, except for whenever we get close to 12, it's going to even off. So to the left, we're still going to end up getting closer and closer to 0. But to the right, it's going to start off going exponentially, but then it's going to flatten out, kind of like this. And so I'm trying to think of if I have, uh, I have my YouTube channel open right now. So I was going to show you what the graph looked like. But you can see, you have a graphing calculator. 
you can do it. Um, so it asks us to find the y-intercept. So we would say y int is 0, 4. It asks for the horizontal asymptotes. Well, just like in an exponential function, we have y equals 0 for a horizontal asymptote, but we also have what our limit to growth is, which is going to be 12. So this graph is bounded between 0 and 12. So it would be lower and upper bound on this one. And last, we're going to talk about population growth. This formula up here, p of t equals p of 0 times v to the t, they kind of hid in our book somewhere. It is in there, but it's not like in a green box. And so what happens is they're going to give us two different populations uh, some years apart. It's going to let us create our own equation based on p of t equals p of 0 times b to the t. The p of 0 is our initial population. So we're using 1990. We're going to use 1990 as our initial population. So p of 1990 equals um, the initial growth, is, or I mean the initial population is 632,910. And then we times that by b to the t. But our time here would be 0. Sorry, I forget what I just started to do down here. Let's start over. OK, we know that the initial population that we're using is 632,910. And they told us what the population 10 years later is. And so what we're going to do is we need to figure out what B is. B is our, our growth factor. So because they told us how much it changed in 10 years, if we assume that it's exponential, then we can end up with a B. Because our example, we're using this data to figure out when the population would surpass 800,000 persons. So we need a formula for that. So in the year 2000, there are 711,265 people. Uh, we have an initial population of 632,910 times b to the t. But t is 10 years, because from 1990 to 2000 is 10 years. So we're going to solve this equation, which we would do by dividing by 632,910. That gets rid of that. And then how do I change b to the 10th to just b? I take the 10th root of each side, which we, I don't know about you, but I don't particularly do very often. So if I type that into my calculator, I'm doing 711265 divided by 632910. And to get the 10th root of that, you would type in 10 and then go to math and go down to option 5. And then I would put in second answer. And I get 1.0117. So if I round that to three decimal places, then b equals 1.011. So, what my actual population growth function thing is, is p of t equals the initial population is 632,910. Then I would put times b, which is 1.011 to the t. We want to know when the population would surpass 800,000 people. And so we would put in 800,000 equals 632,910 times 1.011 to the t. And so we would divide by the 800,000 by uh, 632,910 and get 1.264 equals 1.011t. Right now, basically what we all we can really do is is graph this. We could graph um, 1.264 in 1y1 and then 1.011 to the x 
and we could graph that using a you know a standard window and then just figure out where those intersect and that would be our answer keep in mind that since it's years we know it's going to be sometime after 10 years so actually we can't use a standard window we'd have to use a slightly bigger window I'm also going to decrease my Y's a little bit to hopefully see a better picture. So I'm actually going to make it mine even a little bit more bigger. I did X min is negative 10, X max is 30, or that's what I'm doing now. And so basically you have the two lines are going along almost at the same place and then um, we finally kind of get up to the other line. So I've got enough of a picture that I think I can find the intersection on my calculator. It asks me for the first curve, the second curve, and then to guess. And it tells me that T is 21. Well, it tells me that X is 21.415. And so it asks, when would the population of Com Columbus surpass 800,000 persons? Well, 21.415 years after 1990 so we would answer that with um, 1990 plus either 21 or 22 um, we would usually say well to surpass 800,000 persons we would actually have to get to 22 years so that would be 2012 for our answer